Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone. For drivers who want to get the most out of their cars, it's Bridgestone or nothing. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. Hey, I'm back. It's Friday, and this is AutoLine Daily. Here is what's happening in the news. General Motors is back to being number one in global car sales for the first six months of the year. GM sold over 4.5 million vehicles, nearly a 9% jump. And the Volkswagen Group jumps to second place with 4.1 million cars. Rounding out the top three is Toyota with 3.7 million units. Of course, Toyota was knocked from the top spot because of the earthquake in Japan. Toyota says production will get back to normal in September, but it's still likely the company will trail VW in sales for the year. And thanks to that jump, GM posted a huge profit for the second quarter, $2.5 billion, and that's an increase of nearly 90%. Revenue was $39.4 billion, an increase of $6.2 billion compared to last year. Each region, except for South America, reported slight increases in the second quarter. You know, China's auto market may be growing, but its car dealers are not reaping the benefits. According to Gasku, nearly a third of all domestic dealers in China suffered losses for the first half of the year, with some cities in the country restricting sales of new cars. Dealers are being forced to discount cars because inventories are getting too large. But it's only the domestic dealers who are suffering. 80% of import dealers made a profit or broke even in the first half of 2011. Where in the world is Sergio Marchionne going to put the headquarters of Fiat Chrysler? The Italians think he'll put it in America. The Americans think he'll put it in Italy. Marchionne is hypercritical of how Europe and Italy are treating business, so putting the headquarters in Detroit would really send them a message that they need to change. But here's my auto line insight. Fiat has a much greater concentration of engineering and R&D in Torino than Chrysler does in Auburn Hills. And since Chrysler will rely on Fiat for technology and platforms, the real weight of the organization will still be in Italy. Volkswagen is crying foul on the Obama administration's proposed CAFE rules. Ward's reports VW says the standard is too heavily biased towards full-size pickups and SUVs. A company spokesman said this will encourage people to buy larger vehicles than they need, in effect defeating the purpose of the fuel economy legislation. But the German automaker's biggest concern involves diesels, which are basically ignored by the new CAFE law. The company is not on board with the new rules, but it hopes that an ongoing dialogue with the Obama administration will result in some policy adjustments. <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. GM's latest B-segment car, the Chevrolet Sonic, isn't even available in the U.S. yet, but the company plans to offer an even smaller model. According to GreenCarReports.com, the company confirmed Chevy will sell its itty-bitty Spark hatchback in America. This will give GM complete coverage of the market from the A through the E segments. The Spark is expected to arrive in the first half of next year. Ford CEO Alan Mulally has hit the television talk show circuit recently, appearing on The David Letterman Show and on The Charlie Rose Show. You know, I'm told Letterman has been after Mulally for the last two years, so why is Mulally suddenly appearing on national TV programs? Here's my Autoline insight. Ford has been stung by UAW President Bob King calling Mulally's pay package immoral and outrageous. So they have put Allen on an all-out charm offensive. And judging by the reviews and internet chatter, it's working. People love how and what Mulally has to say, and that will take the sting out of Bob King's comments. Coming up next, we'll take a look at the fantastic paintings of an automotive artist and how he puts so much realism in his work. Reducing exhaust emissions, airified diesel particulate filters, 
high filtration, low back pressure, small package size, excellent durability. DowAerify.com. Last night on Autoline After Hours, we had an artist on, David Snyder, who paints classic American muscle cars, but does it in a way that evokes an era and produces a captivating realism. I asked him how he does it, and here's what he had to say. Um, you know, I start with a blank piece of paper and start drawing individual cars and start composing and then start um, with, uh, and then putting in the backgrounds and the, and the gas stations and doing the research on the on the architecture of the day and the signage of the day and the details of the cars and and, and what what gas pumps would have been in that gas station and what signage would have been in that dealership. I mean, half the fun of it is is doing the research that goes into it to making sure that it's accurate. Because you know, I get um, if I've got the trim wrong on a car or I have the wrong hubcaps or the wrong wheels. So you're I not get, painting this from a photograph. Oh no no. No, no, these are from my memories. Now, I use photographs as, as reference, uh -huh. um, but there's no photograph that exists of, of, of um, this they're dealership. They're almost photorealistic. Um, actually, they're better um, <laughs> than photorealistic. <laughs> if you say so yourself, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, no. I mean, with, um, with photorealist artists, you can tell the photorealist artists with, with the reflections and the, 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 the errant reflections that they put into the work. Um, me, I can take those out. I can edit. I can edit down. To, um, to exactly just what I want to put in there to convey the story that I want to tell. By the way, you can watch that entire episode on our website right now at AutolineDetroit.tv. Just look in the John's Journal section. And of course, don't forget to check out the live broadcast of Roundabout tonight. The fun starts at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time on our website, AutolineDetroit.tv. And that is today's report. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on Monday.